Thank you for joining us today. It is my pleasure to present to you Chef Mark Kalix of White Stones Royal Teas. And today we're doing a wonderful soup. What is that today? That is roasted butternut squash soup. And we're going to feature some of our honey spice rooibos in there. Oh, we're using the honey spice rooibos. Mm -hmm, so right. for our viewers again, remember, rooibos is a nettle from the nettle plant from South Africa. It's grown near the Cedarburg mountain range uh, near the uh, Cape of Good Hope. And uh, rooibos is just such a versatile, versatile plant. It's high in magnesium, high in potassium, and we cook with it all the time. And Chef has used this product in so many different ways, and today you're going to just see one of those other ways. I use uh, rooibos a lot in sweet cooking and frostings and cookies, and I also like to use it in some more savory preparations. It really lends itself well to squash because there's a, some natural sweetness here exactly. as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and prep this. There's a couple ways to peel these One uh, and to handle these. One of the ways is to cut it in half, uh, scoop out any seeds, um, and almost like you're baking an apple, a little oil or butter, um, mm. some cinnamon, some sugar, okay. and then you roast it and then scoop it out of the so shell. Sort of like a spaghetti squash? Almost like a spaghetti squash, okay. and then okay. you can puree that. And another way to do that is to dice the squash which involves a little bit more knife skills. You can see it's pretty hard That's to cut through. That's a hardy through. plant. It sure is. Absolutely. It sure is. I like to take a big 10-inch or 12-inch chef's knife and just come right down the sides. And w once you kind of get it cutting here, it's really pretty easy to handle. I like how you got your knuckles right there. That's so you won't well, chop them off, huh? This is my guide hand, and I use my guide hand to make sure that I don't lose a thumb. Okay, okay. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Viewers, good to know. <laughs> so you can see I'm just going to go around and I can take the skin off before I cut the squash in oh, half. Okay. It's much easier than trying to take the skin off small pieces. Um, and I think this is easier to handle than using a vegetable peeler. Oh, much. In a much, a much um, it's, uh, less time consuming. Yes, yeah, much more expeditious when you have company coming over for the holidays. We run out of time so quickly. I'm a cook, and it would have taken me a half an hour to do that, so I'm glad you showed well, that. Well, if you don't have a handy neighborhood chef, just right. buy yourself a sharp knife and okay. practice. And practice. Practice, practice. Okay. Great so, color. Isn't that beautiful? This I'm going to make a cut, wonderful soup. I'm going to cut this in half. You can see that one end has no seeds at all. That's the narrow end. And the fat end... I did not realize that. ...has the seeds. Okay. Learn right. something new every day. So we're just going to scrape that out like it's a cantaloupe. Mm. Oh, that and smells great. Yeah, it's already it's already got that nice fall fresh flavor it does. coming it does. through when we haven't cooked anything yet. Right. I'll make sure I get all the seeds out because those don't puree as well okay. when we get farther into the recipe. Are these like a pumpkin seed? They're similar. I suppose you could roast them. Um, I don't see why not. They hmm. are similar to pumpkin seeds and they do crisp up. Well, you're going to chop this up, right? Well, I'm going to chop this up and the reason I'm doing that is because it probably cooks uh, cuts down on the preparation time by third, maybe even okay, quarter. Okay. It's much quicker. So I'm going to dice my squash. Okay. And again, just nice knife skills, making sure that I keep the knife touching my hand and that's going to prevent me from making any mistakes, potentially cutting myself. Okay. Great. And then we're going to add other flavor components. We're going to add thyme, garlic, Carrots, onions, okay. celery. And we're going to roast all that together. So with... for our viewers, we sprayed this pan um, with some oil. Yeah, that's to prevent sticking. This can stick to the bottom of the pan and burn, so we wouldn't prevent that. We're going to stir this often while, while it's in the oven. Okay. And you can see I'm, I'm trying to keep the sizes fairly consistent, but not, not really going for different shapes. So this is... Um, kind of an odd shape, and this is a perfect rectangle practically, okay. but they're near the same shape. Okay. Um, this is the kind of thing you could cut a day in advance uh, and cook the next day, or you could oh, do this. Oh, that's really good to know. Mm -hmm. you so if you're making this. a larger meal, you can get this out of the way. You know, this is what I would call all sturdy vegetables okay. and sturdy ingredients where they don't really have um, as much of a time limit on okay. them. Um, I got some carrots here, I got some celery. And you know what? This is one of those recipes where if you're missing something, you just leave it out and charge on. Or maybe if you've got some extra stuff, you throw it in. You get it in there. Okay, got yeah, it. That's got right. It. All right, and some celery. And thyme. Thyme's really a great herb. It goes along it's with squash. One of my favorites. Very, very, very nicely. So um, thyme is very, really easy to work with. You can help me here. Just take Don't a piece. Just, 
a time mm -hmm. and go against the grain, it just zips right off. I actually knew that. I know I you did. I think part. I told you, you that did. Once. I think that's why I know that because you yeah. told me before. Yeah. So well, you work on the thyme. Okay, I can do that. And I'm going to work on the garlic. Okay. Peel garlic. Don't even need to chop it. I'm just going to throw it in there. Oh, wow. And you know, garlic when it roasts, it gets a nice nutty flavor. Right. And nuttiness and the sweetness from the squash. Some of our rooibos. Can't forget that. Oh, you're going to put the rooibos right, right in, in there, there too. Right in there. Oh wow. And you know what? I'm going to use white onion because I think. The color from the squash is going to give us um, a nice a nice tan color, and the red onion might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to go with the white onion. How much time should I be putting? Mm, you're almost there. Almost I would there. add, okay. oh, maybe um, I'm on time teaspoon. duty. You're on time. Yes, I'm on time. Oh, those time jokes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get my onion in there. I'm going to toss it with a little extra. Would you do a half, half a... Half an onion, half, half an a onion? large onion is okay. plenty. And I just cut that into six pieces and it's just going to fall apart. Okay. And you know what? You're going to hand me the... What am I handing you? The extra virgin olive oil. The extra virgin olive oil. I like to roast with extra virgin olive oil because it, it aids in caramelization um, more so than this blended oil. This smells wonderful already. Yeah, well, wait till it comes out of the oven. Wonderful. Okay, why we're going to put this in the oven. Excellent. It's that gonna take looks about, wonderful. It's going to take about 45 minutes okay. and then we'll move on to our next step. Great. That's going to be delicious. All right, we just finished roasting our butternut squash um, here and with it all our... It smells unbelievable. Yes, yeah, the garlic is nice and caramelized. You can see that we have um, some nice dark caramelization. And you know what? I, I baked this for quite a while. I roasted it at a lower temperature and for about an hour and a half. So, you know, I had the time. Why not take advantage of that? Well, and I like how we sprayed the bottom of the pan. It didn't this stick is at so all. so easy to clean up. That's right. And I think if you don't oil or, or grease the bottom of the pan, it could really weld itself on there. So this is a nice way to make sure you get the product off. So I'm just going to get this in my blender. And so just put all of that in there. All of that in there. All that we, goodness. We went to the trouble to peel everything and make sure that all the ingredients that we put in here were ready to consume as they came out. Right. Um, if you're in a tremendous hurry, you could leave some of the peels on, strain those out later, but I think the flavor isn't as clean. Okay, so I think that's Excellent. enough. Excellent. And it's good to use a nice high power blender. Oh, and there, so thank you. I'm going to add some of our honey spice rabbits. So we're adding more of and that that's flavor. that's more of a concentrate at this point. It's been, it's been steeping this whole time, mm -hmm. so it's good and strong. Um, I like to add some uh, dairy. I'm just going to add some skim milk so that's nice and light. And Can people use soy if they'd like? I don't see why not. Okay. Sure. Um, a touch of agave for sweetness. You don't need a lot of this. And remember agave for sweetener uh, from the cactus plant has a very low glycemic index and it won't spike your blood sugar. What's nice about agave is that it's sweetness without its own flavor. Right. So it won't step on other flavors, which is honey why... Honey sometimes does that. It, it tastes does. like honey. It does. Right. Um, we, we recommend using agave in Wystone's Cafe because it doesn't alter the flavor of the teas that we prepare. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and blend this. Straight out of the blender, it's ready to go. Oh. Plenty hot, straight out of the oven. And you can see here, you can see the bits of thyme, you can see the bits of the, the right. ribis. Um, you can really adjust the consistency very easily with water. I like it a little thicker because it's very hearty. Too. It's I almost too. It's like it's a hard meal. Like a stew. That is absolutely Isn't fabulous. that wonderful? Another exciting adventure in the world of tea. Thank you for joining us.